Hello Game Replays and Company of Heroes community. This is Inverse and you're watching another Company of Heroes online first person video cast. Thanks for all the feedback on the forums guys. This game is a match I just recently played and recorded and I'll be commenting on it now after the fact. Next game I'll probably do an another live commentary and just swap off that way. Today we got a special match for you. It's a game against level 26 Blitz Commander goes by the name It's Dusty, and he is also the number 36 Blitz Commander on the 1v1 boards. He will be using a strategy that I haven't personally faced much in Company of Heroes Online, however I do know it's extremely powerful, thanks largely in part to a number of army items. I'm sure you'll know what those are in a few minutes. Longra, typically the only map I VP rush on, you'll see the engineer squad that I'm, I sent to the right hand side plus 10 munitions point. We'll capture that point, then go right to the far right VP, and then proceed around the right hand side there to capture those points. reason I do this on Longra is because in my experience at least, a lot of games end up decided in VPs. Just because it's a fairly balanced map promotes a lot of good back and forth and against an even skilled opponent it's going to go to mid or late game since it's relatively difficult to flank when compared to a map such as Angleville or Samoa. First rifle squad on the field you see me having built my barracks on the outskirts of my HQ sector. Normally some people like to build it to the right of those hedges. I like the protection of the hedges just in case someone wants to try to pack snipe my barracks. See right now this right here, this pioneer squad capping this plus 10 munitions point is the first indication that something's kinda not right. If you look at the tactical or the mini map in the bottom left, you see he's captured a lot of the map. Already got that plus 16 munitions on the left, plus 10 fuel and a lot of the points on the right hand side. I've also already seen two pioneers, make that three pioneers now, and two more coming in from the south. So that makes five pioneer squads right now. I pretty much know for sure he is going to pio spam, or he is already pio spamming. For this reason, I won't be building any hero rifle squads because my preferred counter this match, and there are many counters to pio spam that, that I will address. My counter this game is going to be fast bars, bars after four rifle squads, and because hero rifles don't gain upgrades for the bars, you see me canceling my hero rifles right there and building another vanilla rifle squad. The reason for this is because hero rifles don't gain bars when you purchase that global upgrade, whereas vanilla rifles do, and against pio spam you want as many squads with bars as possible. You see me right now just trying to deny his fuel, because when he sees me going bars, he's going to try to go tier 3 as fast as possible. Other counters to pio spam, I used to extremely, I, I used to love going fast M8, however the problem with that is if your opponent doesn't see bars, it's pretty easy for them to get tier 2 and pack out before your M8 hits the field and negate that M8, which is a serious problem if you invested all that fuel and manpower in tech and in just time wasted and then have your first squad killed instantly by a pack. So I will be going bars this game. Right now, all I'm trying to do, I know because he has the Pioneer Rifle upgrade as well as the Pioneer Toughness level 2 upgrade, I don't really have anything that I can use to go up against his blob right now. So I'm just trying to defend the territory I have, keep two of the three fuel points, which is going to be difficult in my situation, and just try to focus up, blob my forces a little bit. He already has Vet 2 on his Pioneer, so he has Elite Armor now, so I'm going to try to focus on Flamers. It's 
always a good idea to blob against pyo spam. Normally not a good idea to blob as Americans. However, against pyo spam, it's almost a necessity, and it's also safe because you know your opponent doesn't have tier one, so you won't need to worry about getting suppressed. You see me right there focusing the flamer spot. Always focus fire the pioneer flamers when you face pyo spam. If you can force the flamers to retreat or even kill them, you've set your opponent back a whole heck of a lot, their blob will be far less effective because even with rifles, regular pioneers without the flamer upgrade are not very effective. You see me successfully pushing off the opponent on the right hand side, so I'm going to try to recap as much as possible, cut him off, and just buy a bit more time. Bars upgraded right now so I will hopefully be able to go toe and toe with my opponent at this point I'm gonna upgrade that second engineer squad with the flamer once it caps that plus five munitions point I can't right now because it is, isn't in controlled territory and right now I'm just trying to head over to the left hand side push off his guys of course to two infantry squads against his two pioneers and his two pioneers running away isn't really a good use of my time so I will probably turn around yep I'm gonna get the heck out of there especially considering I see the rest of his blob incoming floating a lot of manpower right now which is something I usually don't like to do and you'll see me building a supply yard right now because of this very fact however the nature of this match it's it's difficult for me to keep something building right now considering I want to have a decent supply of manpower and the reason for this is if an engagement goes poorly and I'm pushed off the map and suffered decent casualties he's gonna be able to cap back the entirety of the map because of all his squads. I want to make sure I can reinforce as quickly as possible and get back in the battle. You'll see that actually happen, happening right now. I almost lose two entire rifle squads, both of them down to two men, I believe. One man on one. Lucky he got out, actually. And right now, my thought at this point is I've given him a fuel point. I don't have... Losing a mines anywhere. He's going to be able to cut me off decently. And I don't have a motor pool up yet. He doesn't have any tier 2 units that I can see, so it's possible he's still going tier 2. Of course, it's more possible that he's just going to go right to tier 3. So what you see me doing right now is consolidating my, my, yeah, consolidating my forces. Keeping my flamers in with my rifles, this makes them far more difficult to focus fire and I am attempting to pick off the flamer pioneer squads. Keeping a look down on the bottom at my squads on the group so I can just quickly click one, tap T and retreat, which is what I do right there. And my three rifle squads should be able to push off this final flamer and then the final vanilla pile so I will tab through the group I'm selecting right now. Flare coming in in the base. He's probably trying to see if he can see any tech buildings for me which is why I'm going to build my motor pool down there in the corner just so he doesn't have he doesn't get any ideas doesn't know I actually have it up right now and hopefully plays a little more aggressively with his first tier 3 unit if he builds it I also know he's almost certainly going to go tier 3 right now because he hasn't seen anything in my base that indicates tech. So <laughs> I at first had my engineers go to help quick build that motor pool. Now I'm going to go send them out, spend 75 munitions and drop 3 mines or at least attempt to drop 3 mines in case my opponent forces a retreat. Yep. In case my opponent forces a retreat and tries to charge into my base to finish off the retreating squads, getting a, a AT, an AT gun first, however, I'm going to cancel that soon because I'm going to see his Pioneer, I mean his Puma quickly, sorry for the spoiler, 
And I also see the OP on the left hand side, which is an obvious indication of tier 3. Yep, there you see me cancel AT gun, get an M8. Chiefly because I have decent map control right now, considering he's pile spamming. I have a decent munitions income, so soon I will be able to get um, sticky bombs, which is going to help my case immensely. And I need to worry about his pioneers first and stall his puma if it does hit the field. And you can't really deal with pioneers when you are using. There's the puma. You can't really do anything to pioneers with an AT gun. Of course, a Greyhound, although it can't really counter an upgun puma, it can kind of harass around the map if he tries to decap or capture back any points of mine on outlying sectors away from my main force. I can always just send the M8 in force him to retreat or force him to lose that squad. What I'm doing with my M8 right right there, you saw me back him up and then send him forward again. This is because the accuracy of AT packs, upgun pumas, any AT is less against vehicles on the move. Just like snipers receive less accuracy when they're on the move and snipers have less accuracy against units that are moving always a good idea to try to keep your tanks moving as much as possible triage center finally up normally a good idea to get a triage center earlier against pile spam because flamers get more critical hits because a flamer critical hit is what's going to kill